I'm Jason. Um, I'm on Twitter if you do want to reach out to me. Um, uh, that's if you don't get asked a question, you can always do it on there. Um, I will be hanging around after the event as well. So I'm a co-founder of Big Byte. Uh, there's a few more of us here as well, so you can also ask them questions about Livebug. And as Simon said, we're rebuilding the Liveblog plugin. Um, and this is just the first step of it. And if you don't know what a live blog is, that's fine. Uh, to be honest, a couple of years ago, I had no idea what one was. And Simon's just kind of talked about it like everyone knows what a live blog is. Uh, so if you don't really know, it's a blog post. And it provides role and coverage of an event, an ongoing event. So you know, my wife always finds it really funny that like, I run home from work on Apple event days, and I read the live blog on TechCrunch. And it's just like a weird habit I've been doing for years now. And um, so for example, you could do it on this event as well, you could have a live blog and you could be like, Jason's just got on stage and then a little picture. And that's essentially what it is. So it's pretty basic. Now, I'll just show you a video if you're still confused. Um, I'll just wait for that to load. On here, this would be the editor here. And these two black screens would be your users, so people listening to the event. So I might just send everyone a little message just saying, hello, a little wave. And then it takes a couple seconds. And this is because you know they're waiting to pull the site. So if we give it a second, it'll come through. And you see the bottom screen coming through and the top ones come through now. And then I might have made a mistake. So I might decide to delete something because I've said something rude or there's a spell mistake in it, uh, which is pretty common. Um, and you'll see those disappeared as well. There's other things you can do as well, like embed you know, your tweets. And that works similar to what you would have in the WordPress editor or Gutenberg. You can just paste the link in, it'll convert it. Again, the same thing will work if for any embed. So for example, YouTube, uh, you can paste that in there. That's the same. And so it's just about putting that information for people to follow. So you're probably thinking, Twitter does this. Uh, it does. Uh, and you could use Twitter. Uh, and I'm nothing against it. And we're obviously in the Twitter office today. Uh, so I don't. Uh, I forgot this when I made this slide. Uh, <laughs> but the truth is, uh, and this isn't a dig, there's no limits per entry on live blog. So you can have bigger pieces of information. Uh, a good example of this would have been, you know, I read the budget, for example, on the BBC website, and I found it quite interesting. And they had actually a lot of context about everything, and they had graphs, and I'm not quite sure if you could have fitted that into tweets. Um, you can have more than one at a time. So, I mean, not every big company is going to have more than one event. So Apple just has their Apple event, and that's it. But there's big news organizations now that run multiple at the same time. And actually, the BBC has a permanent live blog now that always runs, and it has little snippets like the currency and just little things that are going on. And they have their articles first start out in their live blog, and it becomes a real article. So they might also run the budget at the same time, so that creates two live blogs, and that's a big advantage. The other side of that is it's readable after events. So you turn it into a blog post, and people come back you know, a day later. So you don't necessarily need to follow up with another post. If you have Twitter, it means that that content spread around a lot with all your tweets, and it, and it kind of gets lost after the event. So you're probably wondering, like, can anyone use this? The, the truth is, yeah, you can. Uh, there's no special infrastructure needed. You can just install the plugin. However, um, th there is things to watch out for. This uses a technique called polling, and it's really simple. It's just there's no fancy word for this. It's just that every time someone comes to read the site, it calls your server every certain amount of seconds. So by standard, we use it every 10 seconds. So you think about it. If you have a thousand users on there and they're calling your site every 10 seconds for an entire hour, that's 360,000 requests in one hour. Now, on its tiny little site, that's probably going to take your website down. And that's why you shouldn't just go and install it and try it out on your site right away. You need to take that into consideration, maybe speak to your host as well. Um, and some of them will probably support this or know about it and maybe can offer solutions for you to do it. Uh, but it's just a context to remember. So just a bit of history. As Simon said, it's been around a while. Um, it's from 2012, and it was built by Automatic. And these are sort of the release cycles that we've had. And um, you can see they're sort of feature driven. So they're like embeds, front end edit. And that just means that the, you know, from the front end of the screen, someone can put posts in rather than logging in through the dashboard and doing it. Uh, rich text editing, that's just having HTML. And this is just for the editor to catch up. And in 1.5 on key events, this is actually something the Guardian does really well, which is you, know, you could say the new iPad's just been launched. And there's a little button you can click at the side that takes you straight to the iPad announcement, if that's what you're after. Um, and then 1.6, we had the REST API, which we've put in now. So it's more compatible with later versions of WordPress. And then this is where we are now. We're at 1.7. And it's the React rewrite is what we call it. And you're probably thinking, why rewrite it? Is this just not another, another challenge or another opinion coming into this plugin? And sometimes you know, developers love rewriting stuff. You ask any developer in here, they'll have an opinion. And some will actually be thinking right now, he's mad. Why did he do that? Well, the truth is, it was written by so many different people. Each release had someone in it. 
and they were in charge of that release and in charge of that feature. And they probably thought their feature was the best. And what was happening is over time, all their features were getting harder to test. And so we hit 1.6, and at this point, you could sort of tell that everything didn't really gel together. And we had this sort of bloated it for it plug in, and it just needed that refresh. And we were finding it harder and harder to test. And it was pretty easy for something to go wrong in the plugin and someone not notice it because the features were difficult to test. So you're probably wondering, React, what is it? Um, it's, a, it's a framework by Facebook, so it's for making UI. So if you actually went on facebook.com today, uh, that, their whole interface is built with it. And it just allows uh, sort of fresh updates. You know, if you're on a Facebook page, you can see the likes going up and down. And that's, that's simply what React is. It allows you to keep tracking the data and updating the UI with it. The reason why we used it, um, mainly actually because the Gutenberg team use it. Um, and there's all their projects with inside the WordPress ecosystem that are starting to use React. And hopefully, it will become common and core for people to use React. So we want to keep that consistent so that people can contribute to some of the big projects that are going on at the minute. So we had a couple of goals when we were doing it. We had to make sure that all the standard features worked. But there was four sort of key goals for us that we wanted to address. And the first one is editor rendering. And this, this might sound really dumb, but I got some emojis on there, and they actually show us emojis. And what this is, is you know, traditionally in the old editor, when you would type, it would stay as plain text. And then when you'd submit it, and it would come through in the front end, it would then render as an emoji. Now, it's quite confusing from an editor not to see what they're typing is what they get. And the WordPress editor itself and Gutenberg have always had this front end, this edit and rendering coming on. So what we wanted to do is implement that. So the first step was just to build the editor so it supported that. And the first step was just to put emojis in there. And then going forward, we can start supporting extra features to do this. Uh, for example, the embeds, they actually don't render yet with inside the editor. And that will be a small update that we can push out. And we want to take these baby steps and not overwhelm people. The other one, and this will also seem like a very simple feature, is pagination. If you build a WordPress site, you're probably pretty common to have pages. You know, you go in, you go to page two, page three. Traditionally, uh, the live blog plugin was lazy load, which is when you keep scrolling on the page and it loads more entries in. The problem with this was it was difficult to come back in and read it after it started. So if you land it you know, halfway through, and it does happen, people come in late, and they want to like, go back and read from the beginning, it, you'd have to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And then it would nag you about updates, and it, and it would jerk around a little bit. And it was, it was quite difficult. So what we've invented is pages. And you would assume that adding a page in is quite a simple feature. But what we need to do is maintain where the user it comes in at. So if they come in halfway through, they want to keep their pages relative when they first entered. So that once they change page, there isn't an entry gone missing because it's been pushed to a different page. So everyone now has a relative paging system from when they first arrive. And it'll let you know if an update's been applied. And you can click to go visit the first page for that update if you need to. And then we want to make it themable. Uh, the old one came with a style in it. And the problem was that when it first came out, it, would, it was quite up to date and it matched the themes at that time. And you could have just plugged it in and used it. The problem is that themes change constantly. And you're going to have to re-theme it. And there's no point you having to fight with the CSS to get it to work right. So uh, you know, we're on uh, 2617 at the minute. And at WordCamp US, you know, they sort of made it that clear that there's not a new one coming out right away. So you know, that was our focus to make it work with that as standard. But to make it themable also. So that's it working with the, the current WordPress theme. It's pretty straightforward stuff. And then what we've been doing at the minute is you know, messing around with it to see if we can mimic some of the bigger live blogs out there. So I'll not say who exactly this is, but it's the same, it's the same blog just re-themed. And that's you know, maybe 100 lines of CSS or less for that. And it's pretty straightforward to do. And what we're going to start doing is offering a few different examples of how you could theme it. So you can pull it down and work from these theme files. And the, the one for 2017 is just there that to pull down and look at anyway, and it's written in CSS. We haven't used anything like SAS or anything complicated to confuse it. You can just pull it down and edit it straight in any editor that you need. Um, so I mentioned testing earlier um, and how that it was difficult for us to test the current plugin. And one way around that was that we wanted to have it testing React how users do it. It's common when you build code that you do something called unit testing, which is to test what a function does is equal to the result you would respect, expect. And in this case, UI testings where you, know, you get the computer to act like a an user. So they go to the browser, they input something, and see, see what they expect to come out. So doing it from that front end perspective lets us test all of React, all of the PHP in the background, and all the way through to make sure there's no issue. So just to sort of show you this, um, so this would be us putting up the tests. So we would start running the test. And then that opens up a browser. And then it logs into WordPress. It activates a live blog. And you can see the speed that it's doing it. 
And then it goes to the front end and it starts adding tons of injuries. Uh, maybe not the maybe a bit of a weird test, but um, I got one of our devs who's also been working on this to do it, and I was like, interesting concept to add free pages. And that's it, and it runs for the test, and down here it shows you which ones have passed. And we're going to start expanding on these tests. Um, we haven't made these tests public just yet, but we're still expanding to the point where it covers everything. And the good side of this, it means that you can pull it down and work on it and add something. If it breaks it, then it'll be pretty clear something's gone wrong. And it should make adding these new features really easy. So we have all the releases down the pipeline. Um, so what's next? Really, it's up, up to you people to decide what comes next. Um, as I said, like we're, we want to take requests and ideas that come through. So I'm open to it because we, you know, we want to have that 1.8, the 1.9, and the 2.0. We want to keep these going. Um, if you do have requests, Phil's in the audience. He wants to put his hand up. He's from Automatic. Phil's like uh, my code reviewer. Uh, so he's in charge. Uh, if you have any ideas about you want to talk, you can either grab me or Phil. And we'll, we were so happy to chat about what the next steps are from this. We um, have a couple of things that we want to do is shareable entries, which is, um, you might have seen this before. You can like tweet out something that I've ma maybe mentioned in the live blog, and then you can click on it, and that'll take you to it. Um, that's not currently in there, and it's something that we're going to update in the near future. I did mention that, you know, People might say you can use Twitter to do live blogging, and that's true. And actually, uh, WordCamp US tweeted out all the stuff that happened, and that was actually really useful. You know, you could be on your phone before you get in, and you'd see what's going on. Um, what we plan to integrate is Twitter both ways, which would be if you have a live blog, you can tweet straight from it. And it, so you put the live blog in, it goes on your site, and it also goes through Twitter. So we, we can get that connection. The other side of that is it's pretty common for editors to just tweet for a site because they're just busy and they type it in their phone. So what we're going to build in is a tracking ability so that if a certain editor tweets with a certain hashtag, that it can be pulled into the live blog. So you have that back and forth, because we want to encourage people to still use Twitter and to use live blog together. Um, we still need to do a bit of a dashboard rewrite. We've left that how it is, and that's just the ability to activate it. Um, there's some tidying up to be done there. It's still usable, but we are thinking about some ideas. So if you've actually used live, live blog before and you have some feedback on how that should work, um, happy to listen to that. And then obviously, you know, to fit in with the talk tonight, uh, we've got a Gutenberg blog to build. Uh, so I've never built one before. Uh, so my challenge probably is next week is to build one. So I'll give you an update on how easy that is. Uh, according to Phil, it's only 40 lines of code. Uh, so we'll put that to the test. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that's me. Uh, that's my Twitter handle. And I'm happy to take any questions. If any questions, can we have a hand raised? And we have a question here. Uh, thank you. One thing I will say, by the way, uh, we've talked about live blogs in the context of, of news presentation, and that's where they typically excel. But what I'd like you to do is also have a think about wider uses of that. One thing we're considering on VIP is doing uh, our outage protocols based on a live blog. So if we ever have a system problem and we want to keep people up to date, people are always desperate for the latest update, you know, are you still working on it? Is it fixed? Is it going to be fixed? Well, a perfect medium for doing that is a live blog. So we're actually looking forward to implementing our own technology for our own purposes. So I would ask you, please, don't just look at this as a news thing. Try and take that lateral step and think, what else can we use this for? We have a question. Speaking of, um, <laughs> so I was thinking really quick, um, you mentioned those continuous live blogs that people like the BBC are, are getting into now. Do yep. you feel like this, in its finished state, once you've done this rewrite, will be able to support and power that kind of continuous live blog, or is that more in the future? No, this can do it. I mean, this has been around a long time. So, you know, we haven't really touched the core technology in the back end that powers it. And so there's proof that it's already doing big, big live blogs. Does that make sense? So, I mean, I can see how you'd be worried because if you spun up, you know, 5,000 entries into it, that seems a little scary. But the back end's already designed to power that. And because the front end paginates it, it only, it only load five entries at a time anyway. So, and you can increase that if you want. So it's not going to load the full amount in when you first load the page. That's, sorry, I just thought of a different one. Um, you mentioned the performance issue with polling. So yeah. the, the issue with web hosts taking your site down, because that's that happened to me. Yeah. Um, did, did, was, was, is there a solution to that? Or is, is that still the issue? Uh, it, obviously, it depends on what your setup is. You know, uh, there's two ways to do a live blog. We've chose Poland because it, it fits in with the architecture that we have within VIP, and um, you know, there's caching available to that. You know, you don't need every request that comes in shouldn't be you know loading the database. It should be cached as well. So uh, there's object caching, and then there's they have varnish on the site as well, which is will mean it doesn't hit the database every time. So that'll help. But you know. What other plugins might have done out there is to have a node server. So what happens is it's push related. So 
when you make a yeah, both socks. So when you make a change, it gets pushed to everyone rather than them asking for the change constantly. Um, and there is an example in there of using Node Server, but I think we'll have to work on that in the future of a better way of implementing it. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't say something about VIP hosting and not all hosts are created equal, but I've said it. Phil, I, I Phil, why are you to, asking questions? I just want to come back on that, because so we do a little bit of special stuff on VIP to make live blog work super awesome, but actually Ori has socket support, so you can spin up a, if you want to, you can spin up a socket server, um, and you can run live blog if you like to. Hello. Um, so I, I actually looked into using your, your live blog thing before. Um, the issue was about posting uh, on, when the, at the event, because uh, everyone wanted to do it on, on their phones. Uh, and the editing experience wasn't great. Uh, so this is more a feature request. Uh, I just actually saw somebody else do a live blog and they used uh, Slack. So they uh, created a Slack channel, yep. named it the Oscars or whatever it was, you write the special Slack bot in, that then creates the live blog, and then everyone that posts on that channel going forward, uploading images and stuff, will post the live blog, which is a really nice solution to posting. Yeah. Blog. Yep. And you know, you've got to think that this is an API-driven uh, plugin anyway, because the React front end, you know, makes API requests. So, like, you know, you could build that yourself. Um, we will start offering integrations into what we can do. I mean, we've discussed internally about building a React Native app to go with it so that you could have it on your phone to have that better experience editing. We've made a lot of changes as well to the editor to make it more mobile-friendly, because that's pretty much where stuff like this is coming from, is the fact that on your mobile, it's difficult to use. So there's work in progress on that as well. Um, but like, if there's any integrations like that that you're after, then let me know. The advantage of the Slack channel is you can invite multiple people as well. Yeah. So you can have somebody doing the photos and another person doing the words, because a lot of the other live blogging solutions are just a one, one man band, which isn't always ideal. Yeah. I think a good strategy for this will probably be that rather than bundle everything with the plugin, which will get massive, is that we might start doing stuff like you know, Slack integration for live blog. Uh, and have these little plugins that can be maintained separately. Um, and so I'm happy to have a stab at that one. <laughs> it's a very, very brave organization that does its live blogging from Slack. I'm not sure I would do that. Uh, we'll take one more question, then we'll move on. I mean, it's a continuation. I was just wondering, again, you talked React. So Firebase fits perfectly with, with that. And then you get this idea of polling and WebSock is not resting on if you explored using Firebase because it's Google and I don't know about privacy and all the rest of it. Yeah, I mean, I think Firebase is a great concept. I've used it in the past, you know. Um, I think the problem with it is you're taking it away from WordPress. Um, and traditionally, this has been stored as, a, each entry stored as a comment within WordPress. It doesn't really fit the infrastructure that we would generally work with um, because we'd be relying on a third party to scale with it. And although Firebase is quick to spin up, it's not accessible for everyone. So there'd be users out there that would have no idea what Firebase is. So in this scenario, it was easier to keep it within the WordPress ecosystem. But I, I understand your question. I think there, for us, it's to start all, you know, offering alternatives like the Node server, for example, that you can support WebSockets or an easy way to do it. We are Go very, on. very excited about what LiveBlog is already doing and can do in the near future. Um, please, this is your chance to grab the people building it and influence it while you can. Will you please say thank you to Jason?